So I'm just going to start off on the painting now. I'll be starting with the sky. Actually, what I'm going to start with for this one is doing some underpainting here. Uh, I'm just going to be using some, some deeper, darker colours uh, and hard ones to pop in. The mountain shape and then I'll just use a bit of isopropyl alcohol, rubbing alcohol, whatever you have. Perhaps not neat vodka. And I'll be using that to wash down the main shapes there. I'll put a little bit up here too. And that would just give me a good solid underpainting for the trees and the mountains, so the shrubs in the mountains, so that's going down there. We're going to put in a bit of a, a bit of blue as well. So I'll just put that down a little bit lower. And I want to put in some darker colours around the shrubbery here. So I'm just putting in there and a little bit Actually, I'm going to put it as an under as an underpainting there too for the just all this area I'll put in a bit of Gold, just sort of colour along there as well. Just and what the other thing I want to put in is I've put in those blues, and I'm just going to put in a bit of uh, a bit of a warm sort of colour down here as well. Put that. Okay. Now I'm just going to wash that in with a bit of um, isopropyl alcohol. So I use Digger's isopropyl alcohol, but I also have run out of that and I've just got a new bottle and it's isocol. It doesn't really matter, it's uh, a rubbing alcohol. And that will help us get in some good shapes. I'm just going to take a little bit and Just using a small brush, rub that in and I, I'm just going to keep those mountain shapes very accurate because that's why I did the accurate drawing at the beginning. And you can see how I transferred and scaled up my image by just checking out that video there. very easy technique. So this is just getting in a bit of an underpainting. Doesn't matter if it runs a bit, I'm just putting in the shapes that are most at play here. The shape I want to keep most is that mountain shape. And the hill shape there, so they're all going in fairly accurately with this underpainting. And then I'll come back in with my other colours later. Just getting in that side bush there. And if they, it runs, it's okay, I'm just going to give it a wipe across. And then just over on Mount, on Cradle Mountain itself, here we go. Up on there. Following around the ridges. with the brush. 
just dipped in the alcohol. Doesn't really matter if it seeps down a bit because it's just going to be the undergrowth there. And this is the bushes there. I don't really mind if some of that runs down into the water because it's going to help with the reflections. So I'll just let a bit of it run down there. I might actually give it a helping hand. And we'll just all lay the reflections there. Maybe some here as well. I might actually go back into that and give it a bit of a deep dark sort of reflective area there with some browns. Just pop them in there. down as well. And it just gives me a base for, for popping in the rest of the reflections later on. ask me what do I start with and I know there's a, a general rule in pastels you start with the hard pastels and work up to the soft I don't bother about that rule too much I'm working on sanded paper it takes a lot of layers I just start with the color I like and I really do love soft pastels and I tend to use them first which I know a lot of people paint artists don't but I don't find that I have any problems with that um, if you don't want to chew up all your good soft pastels by all means starting with the hard pastels I don't I press very lightly so that I'm not laying in a lot of pastel otherwise I would eat them up a lot and I wouldn't leave enough layers enough grit for the uh, next layers but because it is a sanded paper uh, it does hold a lot of layers this one for those of you who are interested is a color fix smooth so it's it's got grit but not as much as their their normal one so you know I go starting up with the sky and I'm going to start up here I'm not worrying too much about the clouds at the moment I just want to put in the smooth that reference photo slightly across and there's, there's a bit of purple in that one so I'm going to just do block in the sky here And it gets a little bit lighter as it comes down so just using my palette here and I'm going to put in some lighter colors as it comes down there and even in some of those areas where I know it's going to be cloud I'm, I'm putting in a bit of the lighter sky color because and it's quite light over here there's a, a lot of light in this area it's where the Sun's going down and it's it's got a lot more light so just putting that in and I'm going to put an even lighter colour in down here not too much of it because down here it's going to be the darker cloud so I'm just putting a few touches of it and I'll probably go back in and put them in later so here I'm just hitting the areas of the mountain where the sky is coming through putting that in again not pressing too hard up through here there'll be some areas where there's going to be a lot of cloud, some not so much. And so I'm just putting some lighter areas there. I'm going back and using the mid shade here. And the bluer shade there. I have through here, I'm actually going to be putting the lightest shade combined with a light shade of purple and it's quite light and it's got a pinky purpley 
tinge to the sky. Surprisingly down here it's got a little bit of a green tinge to the sky so I'm just looking for something with a little yellowy greeny tinge and that'll be just a little bit of that over the top of the blue and then I'll knock it back slightly with my blue again, my palest blue to give it a slight green tinge. So I'm just laying in the basic uh, shapes for the sky. I will need to lay in more layers over that but what I want to do at this stage is just give it a little smush with the side of my finger to cover a bit of the... I'm just pushing it a little bit in at this stage and I'll be coming back to it and putting more layers on but I just want to cover a bit of that push it a little bit into the sand, sandy surface there just to get an idea of, of how that's going. So I've got a, I'm getting a soft graduated sky there. I'm going to just keep working that with the blues and start putting some of the cloud shapes in as well. So a little bit more of the blue here. Try and get right up to my edge. And this time I'm pressing a bit harder. That's all my uh, bright blues going in, and I'm just going back with the next one and going over there a little bit to try and blend that into the next area, blending it in here. And then I'll go in with my lighter one still. the sky is coming along. I might actually start putting in some of the cloud shapes now just so I start to get a feel for them. So up here is a this is quite a warm colour I'm using at the moment compared to the blues I've got in there so I'm just popping in those shapes. I'll need to put in some darker colours there for the bits of shadow in here. So I'm putting those in with a pinky purple. And I might need to go in with a colour I haven't chosen yet. Uh, let's try that one. Yeah, that's more of a grey purple rather than pinky purple, which is probably what I want just in this area and then I want to uh, go in with some bits of pink not too strong at this stage just a few touches so down through here there's going to be a bit of, a bit of clouds coming in with some pink and some purples over this way as well. A little bit of the, the purples up here and some pinks again sort of on the underside of the clouds there a little bit there. There's going to be more pink out here. So I'm just Locking in those shadows up here, uh, those clouds up here, it's quite dark as we come through here. Quite 
dark coming out across there. There's a bit of darkness in that. It's a bit wispy as it comes across there. And this, it's quite purple going across here. Quite purple going across here. So I'm just blocking all that purpleness in, coming in through there. Maybe it's more there. And some like a work through there in the clouds. So again, this is all just blocking in at the moment, not not getting everything in the right spot, just putting in some colours which I'll be working on. They're not putting them into I don't want them too uh, too much on at the moment. I'm not pressing really hard at this stage. I'm just putting nice gentle strokes in there. Some of that will go up through there. So I'm getting the basic shapes of those clouds coming in. And I want to get that three dimensionality going on. Oh, the reds in this reference are very, very bright. Um, I'm just going to probably knock them back a bit to start with and we'll see where we go from there. So down they come into the top of the mountains there, the hills. Uh, and I will not quite the right red but I don't want to go in too sudden with that that very bright red so I'm just putting some of these in to start with and then I'll put in more of the the red reds and a little bit of Pinky reds here. I'm just going to put in some more of these pinks as well, some, some darker pinks. So just getting those colours all in. It takes quite a bit of work, the clouds, because there are lots of different colours going on and lots of different values of the, the pinks in the sky there. So I'm just blocking in quite a few different values as I go. Some of those uh, pinks are bordering on the orange, so I'm going to put in a little bit of that orange I saved up. Well, that's more the red. I need to find another colour that's got, oh, maybe that's the colour I'm after. No, I think I'm going to actually need another colour besides that. So I'm just going to, you can get out all the colours you like, but sometimes you need to go fishing back through for the exact colour that you want. And I'm thinking I want a slightly orange colour in that, slightly orange in the reds. 
there. I'm just going to try and work on that bit again and see if I can give it that quality I'm after, which is a more pinky red. I'm going to introduce a little bit of that up into here as well. And into those purpley colours around there. And there, I'm going to have to go back in again with a bit more of that. Um, I'm going to go in with this red as well and just give it some reds there. I'm just trying to vary the reds up a bit so it's not static and so we've got a, a lot of variety in there and we don't get ourselves focusing too much on just one red. But over there I do want to keep it uh, a pinky colour so keeping the pinks in amongst the reds whilst remembering that they're, they're their deep sort of pinky red colours and not forgetting to put a bit of the, the red in. That one, they're really warmed up red so I'm going to put in some orange in amongst it because that really warms up those reds. Just around this area they're quite warm and then they tend to pink off over here. Okay, so sky is coming along there fairly nicely. All those colours are going to reflect down here into the water as well. So some of those reds are going to come straight down here. Uh, here off the and there's going to be some some purpley colours coming down here this is going to be more the red and orange section there's going to be more of it coming in over here and this is just the the start of it to sort of give me a feel for it This is more pinky reds and this is more purpley mauvey reflections there. So that's kind of how they're going. And that gives me some, some idea of how that's going to come along there. Um, there's not really going to be much of a blue. There's a little bit of blue over here from the sky, but most of it and, and around here. But most of it's going to be those sunsetty colours. So I'm just blocking some of that in as I go. There's some purples down here, but again, I'm going to have to put in some indications of the, the rocks underneath there as well. So. This is just a starter to get me uh, some idea of the, the sort of colours that are going in there. And that, it'll just just give me some idea of how that's going to go down here. It's going to be going more into the purples and then oranges down here so we're going to put a bit of that orange in and it's coming across into purples here and that's giving me a sense of how the water's going to end up here it'll be quite dark around this bit here more, more sort of like 
those colours. So I'm just putting in some little guidelines there for where the Where the edges are going to be. That's good. That might go back slightly there. Like so. So that's looking it all over. I, I'm going to not do too much more to this guy just for a few minutes. I want to put in some of the, the colours on the mountains here just so I remember to keep the shape that I I started off with here. I want to just put in those shapes and I'll have to go back and refine these again. Uh, that's just to keep the Just going to make about that because that's the way the mountain is going. Just to get in those shapes, and I'm going to put in a few different colours there. So that's just getting in the shapes there of, of Cradle Mountain. Uh, that's actually up higher there. As if I don't start putting them back in now, I'm going to, to lose them. So there we go. Means I establish. And again, this is just to get me the rough idea and to keep me centered on where the whole image is going. So just popping down a bit of the greens there to remind me where this bit's going and just a and I don't want to forget that there is some some reflected light from the, the sky on here so I'm just going to pop in some of the pinks there and a bit of a pink glow coming off this one and down so I think that's what I'm going to go back into now into the sky again and, and put some more into the my purples in there. I'm just scrumbling it, just taking it over the top of some of the other colours, those red colours, knocking it back slightly and layering in some more. Of the the purples, mauvey sort of colours. And they're going to go all through here, so I need to put in some quite heavy layers of that. And I'm starting to press a little bit more now on the uh, pastel, just to, to start blending them a little bit by pressing on hard with the pastels I'm just putting in.
to help blend them together a bit. There's a little bit more cloud up here in the in the paler colours. So. And you can see as I put these on, it helps to blend in the colours underneath. And as I put them on wispily, it, it creates those little wisps of clouds. Now it is getting pinker here, so I don't want to do it too light. So these ones are getting quite pink. Oh, I'll put a little bit more colour on those. And some of them are very pink, so they'll get the brighter pink treatment. So just a few bits caught with the the brighter pinks. Now I've got all those in and what I want to do now is blend a little bit of blending with my finger in some of these areas now so I'm just going to go in there and just softens them off a little bit. Don't want to do it too much and I will be going back over the areas I've blended anyway to, to re-establish some of the lovely highlights but this will help to blend, blend in the, the wispy clouds and to blend the edges of the sky with the clouds but I will be going back in again this won't be the finished product around here I want to blend quite a lot because there's a very lovely soft light quality about this area where it's pale blues, pale pinks, pale purples and they're all just mixing into a lovely soft area there and that needs a little bit more of the, the paler colours in there And it's sort of in a wispy quality and that's what I'm going for so I'm just going to blend that all together with my side of my finger to make a lovely light sort of quality there. As it comes up here it becomes a little bit more purpler so I am going to put in, that's a little bit too purple, I'll put a bit more of this one in I think. So it's almost a cloud but not quite. That's all getting blended in. To make a lovely smooth graduated bit of softness there which I quite like. And that will come down just into this cloud too. So I'm just going to Put a bit of that there and can give that a bit more of a blend in. Lovely soft quality to that area. Comes up here a little bit. Now these clouds too, I want them to soften off into the sky. And that's what I'm doing here. And keep that blending going. What I will do at the end is come back in and, and put over some unblended cloud formations as well. I just want to get that bit going first. Nice and soft blended up clouds up here. I'm not blending everything in these but I am trying to blend off the edges to create a little bit of softness there and then I'll go in and put in some nice fresh colour over the top. I'm working from the lights down so I'll just clean off my hand in a moment before I start on the, the really darks. See this bit. I'm not too worried about having my hands too clean because that will just help to transfer around the colours that I'm and blend them in nicely there. Sometimes it's the serendipitous 
of blooming you didn't expect that produces some lovely results. So here I am. I'm just set for off the edge of the darker clouds here. Really nice loose soft path, uh, pinky red bit there. Just blending in now the The square pastels, I have ended up with some sharper edges and this blending I'm doing with my finger is knocking off those sharp geometric edges as well as blending them together and I'll be going back in, careful not to put back in the geometric edges but putting in some nice fresh colour over the top of this blended colour. Otherwise, I'll have blended all the life out of it. That's going well. I'm just giving my hands a slight clean up here. And then what I want to do is go and re-establish in a little bit of the, the paler blue sky there, just because I've lost it a bit. And I'd like a little bit more of it in there, in that area. And a little bit more back in here. Because I've got this sanded paper, it's it's quite easy to re-establish those blues. If it was just flat, no sand, no grit on it, I'd find it hard at this point to be putting back in sky colour because I I've um, I would have used up all the grit. But right now, I'm not finding it that difficult. Trying to be careful there to get some nice organic uh, shapes going rather than that sharp end of the stick. So, putting a little bit of that through there, a little bit more around here. And I just want the barest touch up here along the top of the mountain there. Just a little bit. And just a touch in there. That's all looking pretty good. I apologise for my propensity to use the word so. I use it quite a lot of notice when I'm doing these videos. So, so there I go again. Apologies for that. Now I'm just re-establishing now some of the the brights that I had there, the light and the life of it. And this will put the freshness back into it again. Because I don't want to lose that. I want to put in that, that nice uh, pinky purpley. And there's a whole lot of purple going on around here that needs re-establishing it and that's maybe a little bit too dark. Let's try this purple here. 
which is really probably a bit too light, so we might do a combination of the both of them. orange back in over here as well because there's a real orange glow to that as well I think I might pick up a different orange and use happy with it except for this area here it is not the color I want and I've got to work on that and work out where I'm going wrong what I'll do is on my little practice area I'll try for a few techniques to try and get the color I'm after it's not giving it to me what if I try so I'm putting in a, a bit more red around here a bit more red and what I want to do is then put a bit of this colour over it Still not quite what I want. It is a pinky red with a touch of violet in it up the top. And I'm just layering here again with the reds and the mauves, trying to get to recreate those colours. And I don't want it to be all blue there, so I'm just 